Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down every single matchup from week one and discussing whether you should start or sit the quarterbacks in all those games, breaking down every single matchup from Thursday Night Football, which is tomorrow if you're watching this video as the video comes out all the way through Monday Night Football. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you'd like access to my weekly rankings, as well as an answer to any of the questions you guys may have, check out the Patreon link in the video description for $7.50. So without further ado, let's get in to today's video. We begin with the first matchup on the week, Thursday Night Football, the Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this is a matchup that you definitely do not want to overthink. I fully understand that both the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs have very good defenses, and there is a chance that this game ends up being lower scoring. But when you drafted Lamar Jackson inside of the third or fourth round, when you drafted Patrick Mahomes sometimes even as high as the second round, you are going to start them, no questions asked, every single week. It doesn't matter if they're going up against the Monstars defense, the 85 Bears, or an easy defense, you are going to start them every single week. So while Lamar Jackson is facing a tougher Kansas City Chiefs defense, you could easily see a scenario where this game plays out and Lamar Jackson is the quarterback one and this game ends up being an absolute firefight. Same thing goes with Patrick Mahomes, right? The Ravens defense is relatively scary, but Patrick Mahomes could go out there and throw for three four touchdowns, have a absolutely huge game, even without Hollywood Brown out there. So both Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes are must starts every single week. And in week number one, we've said it in all of the start sit videos. Do not overthink things. Start your studs. Keep it simple, stupid. The kiss method. Next up, we move to the Green Bay Packers at the Philadelphia Eagles Friday night football in Brazil. Now, Jalen Hurts, just like Lamar Jackson, just like Patrick Mahomes, you paid the pretty penny for them, so you are going to start them no matter what, right? Jalen Hurts was my quarterback one in the offseason draft process, so I am going to want to start him. The Green Bay Packers defense is good and all. I definitely get that, but I think Jalen Hurts could have a huge game here and finish as the quarterback number one. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. They also have Jahan Dotson, Saquon Barkley, a whole lot of weapons for Jalen Hurts. And while they did end up losing Jason Kelsey in the offseason... They are still going to tush push. They bring in Kellen Moore, which might make the offense even better. So Jalen Hurts is a locked and loaded top five start for me on the week. Jordan, love me tender. Love me sweet is a guy that I was given the gawk gawk 9,000 special to metaphorically all off season long. There's a lot of people that really kind of think Jordan Love is a one year wonder. Jordan Love didn't deserve that fat bag that he was given in the off season in terms of his contract. And they're ready to slander Jordan. Jordan Love left and right, but ultimately, I think Jordan Love deserved the contract, and I think in a matchup like this, up against the Philadelphia Eagles, a game that has high scoring written all over it, Jordan Love should have a solid game inside the top 10 or 12. Now, I also want to say something that I talked about in the wide receiver start sit video that, if you haven't seen that, make sure you watch it after today's video, but what I said there was... If this matchup was in Philadelphia, I think this game really would be high scoring. But since it's in Brazil, these over the pond games, right, where you're in some completely different country, a lot of the times they don't live up to the expectations. So that is something to note. But I'm still definitely starting Jordan Love and I'm still definitely starting Jalen Hurts. Moving now to the Sunday slate, 1 p.m., the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Hot Atlanta Falcons. Russell Wilson, this is a fine matchup for Mr. Unlimited, who was relatively decent last year. A lot of people like to shit all over Russell Wilson, but he was better than people give him credit for. Was he the old vintage Russell Wilson that was one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL? No, but he also wasn't complete and utter dog shit like people think. But 
This is his first game in the Arthur Smith system and with a game plan that I believe is going to be heavily focused on attacking the rushing defense of the Falcons, just attacking them on the ground and not through the air, playing Russ is too much of a risk. Again, keep it simple. Russell Wilson, unless you're in a two-quarterback league, probably wasn't even drafted. And if someone drafted him, they might have drafted him as a fucking joke, as a meme, right? So even in your two-quarterback super flex league, he probably isn't a guy that you want to start. So you definitely don't want to worry about Russ and just don't start him or leave him chilling on the waiver wire. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Thuggins, Kirk O'Chains should have a solid season, in my opinion, in Atlanta, coming off of the torn Achilles. But just like I mentioned with Russell Wilson, this is his first game in a new system. And since he's coming off of a serious injury, I would rather let him ride the pine this week. Kirk Cousins was a guy that I saw get drafted in a majority of my leagues as a backup quarterback. And I think he is a perfect backup quarterback for fantasy football. If your QB one is a little bit suspect and they have a down matchup, you can throw Kirk Cousins in there and he could have a top five game with the weapons that the Falcons have. But up against the Steelers defense, I definitely want to bench him this week. Next up, we move to the Arizona Cardinals at the no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Tyler Murray is a guy that I was given the Sukalamink special to all offseason long. I loved Kyler Murray at ADP, and that is no different in this matchup. I think Kyler Murray could end up as the quarterback one. The Bills defense last year was solid up against quarterbacks in terms of fantasy scoring, but what I will say is with how many changes they made defensively, I wouldn't read too much into that. A lot of the time, when you're looking at stats from last season, they are a bit fugazi, if I'm being honest with you, and especially with a team like the Bills, who did the fucking electric slide, the cha-cha shuffle. What's the shuffle called? Whatever. You know what I'm talking about, right? They shuffled the defense around a ton. The Bills might be a team that everyone's ready to throw the hammer down in their survivor league. Oh, the fucking Buffalo Bills are going to... Cleveland Steamer, the Arizona Cardinals. And while I think that's entirely possible, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I think this could be a high-scoring game. Even if the game does end up going sideways for the Cardinals and they're getting spanked, we should see them throwing the ball a ton late to boost Kyler's value. A clear top eight quarterback, in my opinion, and you can argue him all the way up to a top three quarterback on the week with the rushing upside he got, the addition of Maserati Marvin Harrison. I expect Kyler to ball out in this game. Josh Allen is my quarterback one on the week. One of the easiest matchups on paper, if not the easiest. I expect Allen to slice his way through the Arizona Cardinals defense like a hot knife through butter. Allen could easily rip off 25 plus points in this spot, and I expect some solid rushing output out of him as well. Next up, we move to the Tennessee Titans going up against the Chicago, Chicago Bears. Now, with Mike Vrabel now on the Cleveland Browns staff, we are going to see a new look Tennessee Titans offense, and I actually think they are going to be fun to watch. They're going to be firing on all cylinders, and it's not just going to be that super run-heavy, Derrick Henry-centric offense. And I do like Will Levis, and I'm rooting for him on the season. I think Will Levis is underrated. But I'm not going to sit here and say Will Levis is guaranteed to be the starting quarterback of the Titans two years down the line. I don't know if he's necessarily the answer, but I think in this system, he's going to have some solid games. But up against the Bears defense that I like a decent amount and with D-Hop likely hobbled, he'll probably end up playing, but I don't think he's going to be the same D-Hop we're used to. Levis belongs on the bench. Caleb Williams, on the other hand, this is an amazing spot to start his NFL regular season debut up against the Le Titans defense. This guy is going to slice them up like Jack the Ripper. Caleb was looking a little Mahomey, I can't lie, in the preseason. And frankly, this dude might end up being a top five 
real life quarterback by the end of the season. Now, when I say a little Mahomey, obviously it's a fucking joke. One of the announcers said that that's looking a little Mahomey, right? It's a glaze on Caleb Williams, but I do genuinely think that Caleb's a very good player. We love the tape out of USC. He falls onto a team with a loaded arsenal, a loaded weapon core of DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. Mix that with a top half offensive line and Caleb Williams will be dicking down defenses with efficiency all season long. He ranks just outside of the top 12 quarterbacks for me, but I can definitely see him being a top 12 quarterback in his first ever NFL regular season start. Next up, we move to a matchup between the New England Patriots at the Cincinnati Bengals. We could have talked about back-to-back rookie quarterbacks making their first start, but Gerard Mayo hit us with the Dikembe no-no-no as he's going to be starting Jacoby Brissett as the lead signal caller in this matchup. While I do like Jalen Polk as a sleeper rookie wide receiver, and while I still like my boy Demario Douglas, this is very far. It is a fortnight away from a great wide receiver core for Jacoby Brissett, and even in the deepest of leagues, the two quarterback, the super flex leagues, he's not even fucking rostered in my super flex two quarterback league because no one wants to play Jacoby Brissett. Is he the worst quarterback on earth? No, but the offensive line sucks ass. Jacoby Brissett isn't very good and the weapons aren't the best. So Jacoby Brissett is going to be laying down on the fucking dirt the whole game, getting rocked. So there's no need to play Jacoby. Again, with some of these guys where it's just blatantly obvious you don't want to start him, I don't need to sit here ragging on the guy, right? Because I'm sure Jacoby Brissett is a nice guy. And I think he actually is uh, from his old school interviews that I've seen when he was the quarterback of the Colts. Joe Shiesty, Joe Burrow, Slim Shiesty is a start in this game. Now, the only worry about Joe Burrow that could stop him from being a top eight quarterback this week is that the Patriots are getting face fucked by the Bengals, right? They are getting hit from all directions, Bukake style, and they're just running the ball late out of the game. But even if that does end up happening, Burrow will likely get his points early on. I don't worry too much about his hand, to be honest. But I think we're going to get a top eight game out of Joe Burrow. Also important to note, Jamar Chase, as I'm recording this, currently still holding out. Maybe as you're watching this, it's Friday or it's Saturday, and maybe Jamar Chase signs. But from what I heard from, I believe it was either Rappaport or from Ian... I almost said Ian Schefter, Ian Rappaport or Adam Schefter, that if he's not signed within 48 hours, like the next basically 36 hours at this point, probably not going to play on Sunday. Either way, though, Joe Burrow should be fine, but I definitely would prefer for Joe Burrow's sake if Jamar Chase was out there and for the sake of anyone that drafted Jamar Chase. Next up, we move to the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts, which could end up being one of the most fun games On the week, two sophomore quarterbacks. One quarterback who in his rookie year had an amazing year, really beat out everyone's expectations. And one guy that looked amazing, but played in like four fucking games because he was constantly chilling in the hospital. CJ Stroud in the last matchup between these two teams. Now I want you to take this with a grain of salt, right? These are not the exact two same teams playing. It was a long time ago, but this is just a interesting tidbit of information for you guys. CJ had a top eight performance last time these two teams played in week 18. You want to know who wasn't in that game? Anthony Richardson, because he was hurt. Now, with the addition of Stefan Diggs, he has an incredibly safe floor week in and week out. And this could be a high-scoring game, leading to him finishing inside the top five or the top four. He is a very safe top eight quarterback for me on the week. Anthony Richardson, last time these two teams played when Richardson was playing, was all the way back in week number two. In that matchup, AR let his chopper sang as he dropped 17 fantasy points. Nick, that's not that crazy of a performance. He dropped 17 fantasy points while playing in 32% of the snaps. He got hurt in that game. He got whacked out like Adriana LaServa. And he had two rushing touchdowns on three rushes. How do I expect him to 17 times three? Because, right, that would be like a full game. 
course not. I don't expect him to go fucking bananas, go absolutely crazy in this game, but he could have the quarterback one performance. He has that top three upside in any given game due to his rushing upside. He'll be a top five quarterback for me on the week. He'll be ranked ahead of CJ Stroud. Anthony Richardson obviously has that injury risk with him. Knock on wood, we don't root for injuries, but when healthy, the guy's going to be insane for fantasy football. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at my Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. I don't want to sing the whole fight song here for you guys, but I am so pumped for the season, man. I I love fantasy football. It's my favorite thing on earth outside of my fiance. Shout out to Nicole, but the Dolphins, I'm so excited for this, man. I hope we're good this season, but we probably will end up sucking cock somehow. But uh, in this game, this should be a fun one. Trevor Lawrence, touchdown Jesus, should have a high-end quarterback to performance this week as someone I projected to be a top 16 quarterback. The Dolphins offense, or defense and offense, I guess, was hit or miss last season, but especially defensively, some games they looked amazing. I was starting to get real high and mighty, like, oh, look at the Dolphins defense. And then they ended up just fucking being terrible towards the end of the season. They had a bunch of injuries, but they patched the holes on the guys that they lost. I think the Jags will be playing from behind a bunch in this game, leading to Lawrence having to throw the rock more. And while we kind of have a sour taste left in our mouth from Lawrence, pause from the end of last season, with the Jags prior to the injury of Trevor, Trevor was cooking up a five-star Michelin chef meal made by Gordon Ramsay. So he should be a solid weekly player with top eight upside in better matchups than this one. Now, he could finish as a top eight quarterback, but this isn't the most ideal matchup, at least in my opinion. Tua Tungavailoa, big oos himself, will be a top 14 quarterback for me on the week, and I've been debating ranking him or Caleb Williams as the quarterback 12 on the week. Tua is always great at home early on in the season. This game is at home. And it's week one, which would be early on in the season, which would indicate you want to start Tua. Next up, we move to the Carolina Panthers at the New Orleans Saints. We move from a game that could end up having 50 plus points scored, maybe 60 plus points scored if we get a real fun one, to a game where there might be 24 total points scored because these teams fucking reek. Bryce Young looked like straight up trash last season. Shout out to Oscar the Grouch, right? But Dave Canales... Might save this man's life, right? Dave Canales might hit Bryce Young with the quick revive here. But this is a big but. Shout out to Jen Selter. Shout out Sydney Sweeney, who now has an absolute badonkadonk, but not as nice as my my fiance's. Of course, I almost said my girlfriend. She would have killed me, but she doesn't watch these fucking videos. Who cares? <laughs> but uh I care about her, but this is all a joke, guys. Not everything I say is super serious. Now the takes about the players, they're serious. But the, you know, the inside commentary, yeah, it's jokes, you know, it's just for funsies. Here. But in a solid a game against a solid Saints defense here, I would just stay away. Like, I actually really do like Bryce Young this season. While a lot of people are ready to just bury the dude, say he's a bust, like, oh, CJ Stroud's so much better. The Carolina Panthers are shit for brains for drafting Bryce Young instead of CJ Stroud, even though basically everyone would have rather drafted Bryce Young. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. The Carolina Panthers are a disaster. They are a clown franchise, this, that, and the other thing. But getting rid of Frank Reich, bringing in a coach like Dave Canales, who is just basically a fucking quarterback whisperer, not like how Adam Gaze was a quarterback whisperer, but a real quarterback whisperer, saves Geno, saves Baker. He could end up saving Bryce Young as well. Plus, Bryce Young has better weapons this season. But in week one against the Saints, stay away from it. Derek Carr was better towards the end of last season, right? He was looking solid. But to be honest with you, anything would have been better than the disaster of what we saw at the start of last season, where he was ripping off games with like seven fantasy points, which is legitimately hard to do. There are blind people out there that can make better decisions at throwing the football than Derek Carr. The motherfucker looks like Stevie Wonder out there in the pocket, and there is no way that I'm starting Derek Carr in 2024. Next up, we move to the cold like Minnesota Vikings at the New York football Giants. Now, I want to lay down my marker here. I want to plant my flag on the Sam Darnold bandwagon. Now, mono man Sam has let everyone down. He let the Jets down. And I guess that's about it, right? He let the Panthers down too, I guess. But I actually think Kevin O'Connell is such a great system guy, right? Kevin O'Connell creates such a good system. We saw positive 
quarterback play out of scrubs last season in the Kevin O'Connell system. And I think Sam Darnold's good enough to be good in it. Is Sam Darnold what a lot of the Jets fans were fucking fondling the guys Johnson for? Fucking playing with his balls like it was a Fushigi? No, no, he wasn't. But he could have sneaky good games this season. And I think he could be top 10, top five in terms of passing yards in the NFL. I really do. And he could have a sneaky good game here up against the Giants defense. But there is zero reason to get cute in week one. There is zero reason to overthink things. There's no fucking reason to magically pick up Sam Darnold and play him ahead of Patrick Mahomes or something like that. So Sam Darnold will be chilling on the bench or on waivers. Now, Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, okay with the beard. I'll be honest, with the beard he's got right now, kind of looks like an actual NFL quarterback. I can't lie. When I saw him, I was like, holy shit, he looks not as stupid as he used to look, right? He has that, that the case of the Eli face where he's just sitting there, the Manning face where he's sitting there, and it looks like he just shit in his diaper that's in his pants, right? But I'm not going to let that fool me, right? I'm not going to let the potential aura that Daniel Jones might have gained fool me. Plus, he said he might end up just shaving it off, which would be stupid because, again, he does actually look like a better quarterback with that. I know that doesn't make any sense. Some people, that would make zero sense. But if you look at him right now, saw a picture of him in the locker room, and he looks like a like a legitimate quarterback. Like, wow, that's Daniel Jones. Whereas, like, you see him without the beard, and he looks like Danny Fumbles. But I'm not going to let that disguise fool me. I know who he is. He ain't good. Matchup is fine, but I don't trust him. You're going to sit him down. Next up, we move to matchup number 11 here. The start of the 4 p.m. slate. We got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Los Angeles Chargers. But before we break down this game, as well as the rest of the slate for the quarterbacks, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play NFL Pick'em in the whole entire universe, and Underdog has a great offer for you guys today. If you're a first-time depositor using promo code NOTORIOUS or by clicking on the link in the video description, you'll be able to claim your free pick plus a first-time deposit offer of up to $1,000 in bonus cash. You will also receive a free pick of Travis Kelsey higher than half of a total yard in week number one up against the Baltimore Ravens. All he has to do is get one yard and that pick will hit. So you're going to match that with another pick. Now that could be a pick from Thursday's game, Chiefs versus the Ravens. It could be from Friday's game with the Packers going up against the Eagles or on one of the games on Sunday. Once you go ahead and do that, so for instance, we're to do Isaiah Pacheco higher than 62 and a half rushing yards. You match that with the Travis Kelsey pick and you'll receive three times what you enter into the pick em slip. For example, we use Derrick Henry and Pacheco here. You match those two together. You put $15 on this entry and you'll receive $45. $5. Again, if you are a new user to Underdog Fantasy, make sure you guys use promo code NOTORIOUS or click on the link in the video description. Back on into things here, the Raiders at the LA Chargers. want to keep things simple here. I don't think the Raiders are going to absolutely fucking devour the Chargers like they did at the end of last season where they hung. I don't even remember how many points it was. It was an insane astronomical amount of points. Like, I thought the Dolphins game was crazy when the Dolphins beat the ever-living shit out of the Broncos, who we're about to talk about. That game, it it was crazy. It was really crazy to see, like, uh, the Chargers had no answers. Easton Stick, whoever was out there, it was so bad. Uh, Gardner Minshew had some solid showings last season in Indianapolis, but ultimately, what is really the upside for Gardner in this game, right? Charge defense is is okay, right? Harbaugh is going to run the ball a lot. Like, there's not going to be a lot of time of possession for the Raiders. So, like, what's he going to do? Score 16 points? Okay. Cool. That's the upside. He's a clear sit. I'm not going to waste too much time, though, talking about this matchup at the quarterback position because you shouldn't be starting these guys. Now, Herbert would be a start if I was more confident in the weapons around him day one. And you want to add into the fact that Harbaugh just loves to run the ball. He loves two things. If you've ever heard him talk, he loves fucking SpongeBob. He doesn't love fucking SpongeBob, but he loves SpongeBob the guy, character, the cartoon, and he loves running the ball. I will just stay away from Herbert the pervert in this spot. Next up, we move to game number 12, the Denver Broncos at the Seattle Seahawks. Now for Bo Nix, I'm sitting him in his first ever NFL game. I'm a fan of Bo Nix though, and while he did play in college for what felt like a decade, I think he could be the franchise guy in Denver. With all that glazing said, right, with all I just said positively about him, 
with the suspect weapons in Denver outside of Cortland Sutton, and with the matchup not being great against the Seahawks defense, just don't start Bo Nix in his first ever game, right? That's why I like the Seahawks defense in fantasy. Not because I think Bo Nix is some fucking scrub, bottom of the barrel janitor, DoorDash driver here. And again, being a janitor or a DoorDash driver isn't a bad profession. It's just a fucking joke. But I know everyone already got that, so I didn't even have to say that. But there's always that one person that's like, Nick, you're such an asshole saying all these things. Um, but yeah, Bo Nix, I like the guy. Should be, I think, a competent NFL quarterback. But I'm not starting him in his first game against the Seahawks defense. You know, Smith was started to put up some solid performances down the stretch of last season after a very lackluster season following a great 2022 campaign. I like the new system around Gino, but still Gino, right? Well, I think he could bounce back, play a little bit better like in 2022. You know, they get rid of the resident gum chewer, Pete Carroll, kick him to the curb. Don't you come back? No more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. You know, he's definitely a fine quarterback, too, in two quarterback leagues. But in your one quarterback league, you just don't need to start Geno Smith up against the Broncos, even if the Broncos defense is ass. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the Cleveland Browns. Now, the massage man, Deshaun Watson, starts off the season in a tough matchup, right? The Cowboys got a tough defense. The Browns got a tough defense. This might not be all that fun of a game to watch. If you like points, if you like that defense, you might have a fun time. Even if Watson was to hop into the hot tub time machine, hop into the DeLorean, go back in time and go back to his old days where he was one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, I would be worried up against this Cowboys defense. So I'm going to avoid Watson here, though, if he did actually just somehow turn into the old version of himself, I probably would start him. I'm being honest with you. Dak. Now I'm going to start Dak, but despite how much I love Dak, pause. This is not the first matchup you want. This is not the ideal matchup if you drafted Dakota Prescott. The Browns defense is one of the better ones in the league. And while I think Lamb is basically invincible to the matchup, he is matchup proof. I think Dak falls outside of the top 12, but he does have much better days ahead as I think Dak will finish as a top 10 quarterback. He is still a start for me, but he's in the quarterback 16 to 18 range. He's good enough to have a solid game here, but it would be foolish to rank him much higher. Next up, we move to the Washington Commanders. The left hands up. Who are we? The Commanders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now we'll go first with the veteran, Baker Mayfield. Now the Commanders defense is hot ass and we ain't talking about Phoenix Marie. So Baker should have a solid game. Now they lose Dave Canales, who's now in Carolina with Bryce Young. And that is enough to make me at least panic enough not to rank him super highly. He's like quarterback 16 to 18. I think he should have a big game, but I am worried about the change at offensive coordinator. Jaden Stormy Daniels is a start as well. And I like Jaden Daniels more than Baker, even though I think like if Dave Canales was there, I would have Baker ranked higher in his first NFL start. Ever. I guess technically he had his first NFL start already in preseason, but you get what I mean, right? His regular season debut. Daniels has the upside to have that really big game. While his weapon core is as weak as it gets with really just Terry McLaurin and a bunch of CFL players, due to Daniels rushing upside, he could still feast against the Buccaneers defense. I think I will be lower on him than consensus because he's currently ranked as the quarterback 10 on expert consensus rankings on fantasy pros, but I definitely will have him inside of the top 12. Now it's pretty risky to start a rookie quarterback in their first ever game. That does kind of give me some pause, but the reward is too sweet for me to bury him in my rankings like a double chunk chocolate cookie. Shout out the Costco guys. Shout out to Big Justice. The Los Angeles Rams at the Detroit Lions because you waited all day for Sunday night. I love this game. I love this game. Kelly Stafford will be at home because she's scared of getting booed again. Boo-hoo. Matthew Stafford comes home for the second time in the last couple of years like a deadbeat dad, and he is ready to come back with vengeance. Vengeance. And... He was slain by the Lions last time. The Lions got the best of him like he was like a fucking gladiator back in the day in Rome. But unlike those guys, he gets another chance at it. He gets another chance at those Lions in a revenge game. Both of these teams are solid defensively, but I do believe this could be a barn burner. Stafford possessing as much rushing upside as Stephen Hawking will have him ranked as a fringe start. Plus, he's kind of just permanently banged up, so you never really know truly how healthy he is, but... 
he should be fine. He's got Puka, Cooper Cup, solid weapons, Kyron Williams as well, and uh, Demarcus Robinson. Jared Goff, the Goffinator, will be let loose here to have another shot at the team that shipped his ass to Detroit while it's a double revenge game. When do we ever see, like, double quarterback revenge games? This is the one, at least off of my memory, that I can remember. Uh, no one really talks much about Goff, right? Goff is kind of, he's the butt of a lot of jokes, right? A lot of people like to make fun of Goff. Goff is a head coach merchant. He's a system quarterback, this, that, and the other thing. And maybe he is, but the guy's got a million dollars and a hot-ass wife. So congrats to Jared Goff. Very reliable week in and week out. And especially at home in Detroit, this game is at home in Detroit. So that's a, that's very positive for him. With the Rams defense losing some pieces, like uh, that guy named Aaron Donald, I do expect Goff to finish inside of the top 12 and at the very least finish inside of the top 14. So Stafford is more of a fringe start and Jared Goff is more of a top 12 start and he is a top 12 start. Final game here, Monday Night Football, the New York Jumbo Jets at the San Francisco 49ers. And isn't it really messed up that the NFL scheduled Aaron Rodgers to have a primetime game, his first game back, up against the same dude that quote-unquote tore his Achilles. Now, I get it's not that guy's fault, but that's a little bit crazy, ain't it, right? That's just kind of the script that the NFL wrote. Now, Brock Purdy finished as a top-six quarterback last season and, as a whole, is a very underrated player. In such a fantastic system, I believe he could repeat that success. Now, do I have him ranked on the season as a top-six quarterback? No, but could he end up doing it with Ayuk, Idol, uh, CMC, Debo, so, uh, okay offensive line. Yeah. Great system. Again, it's all about the system with Brock Purdy. But against the Jets defense, Purdy is basically a last ditch option. He is, would be the lowest ranking starter in today's video. 18 guys are starts. The rest are sits. You could argue for Herbert or Geno above him, though. Or if you're feeling frisky or feeling risky, you can go with A.A. Ron Rodgers. Rodgers is a sit, though, in his first game back from the Achilles in enemy territory at the age of 40. The age of 40 is not ideal, right? Against kind of a tough defense. Though, I could see him coming back and bending the 49ers over a table. I would sit him, but he is close to a start. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. Let me know what you guys think about these players. Are you like, Nick, you fool? Aaron Rodgers is a start, you idiot. Let me know what you guys thought. Make sure you guys. Ask any questions in the comment section. If you want a guaranteed answer to your question, though, there are a lot of comments. The last four videos combined for, I think, 700 total comments. And there's going to be more after I record this. There's probably like 10 unanswered ones that just came through as I was recording today's video. If you want a guaranteed answer, make sure you subscribe to the Patreon for $7.50 a month. I am on there all the time answering your guys' questions. We also have a Discord, should be linked down below in the video description. I hop in there every once in a while as well. Plus, you guys like to talk to each other and answer your guys' own questions. So I really do appreciate you guys all a ton. Thank you guys all so much for all the growth we have seen recently. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you're new, whether you are new to the channel or not. Make sure you guys leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. I am so excited. For football tomorrow, if you're watching today's video, when it came out, football's tomorrow, football's back, and it's better than ever. Love you guys all so much. Have a great one, as always. Good boy!